If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get lots of interesting videos like this one. And if you like the video, it'll really help us out. Please comment down below for any other interesting things that also really helps us out as well. Hi, welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So reason we talked about graphs yesterday is that I wanted to introduce this problem for algorithms. So this is a problem that's actually really, really important. And in fact, I, in some sense, deal with it in my own research. So this problem is something called independent set, and we find, want to find the maximum independent set. So what is an independent set, first of all? So we talked about graphs, which are these collections of vertices, these points, and uh, we have lines in between them, uh, which are called edges. So I'm going to make a simple graph here. Okay, so then what is an independent set? An independent set is a collection of vertices that, that don't have edges between them. Okay, so I could say I'm going to pick that vertex, I'm going to pick that vertex, and that vertex. So there's no edge that connects any of these three together. Okay, uh, and so the blue vertices form an independent set as a result. So the question is here, we're given a graph here. What is the maximum, what is the max size of any independent set? I'm going to abbreviate it IS. Okay. So in this case, it happened to be three. It may, in fact, be possible to get four, although I'm not exactly sure about this one. But it, it may be possible to get more. So it, it's a, a well-formed question. And what we want to do is we want to figure out what is the maximum independent set. So we're not going to actually talk about maximum independent set for general graphs, but instead what we're going to do is we're going to focus on trees. So remember a tree is an acyclic graph, so there's no cycles in the graph. So in this case, for example, I could eliminate that edge, uh, that edge, that edge, and uh, that edge. Okay, so th this was this is a tree, and of course, if I had an independent set in the earlier graph, uh, I have one in this graph. Um, but here we can see that if I take that vertex, that one, that one, and that one, there are no edges between them, and so we get four vertices this time as a max independent set. So we can't necessarily just use a general technique uh, to get the maximum independent set because the answers can and will be different. So let's actually think about this. So let's say we have some vertex right here and, and we are not sure whether to put it into the independent set or not. So we're deciding whether to put this guy in. And of course, let me make this orange. This guy may have a bunch of neighbors. So remember a neighbor is a vertex that's connected to that one uh, vertex we're interested in. So Let's just say that for pure sake of argument that we are going to put this vertex into the independent set. Okay, What does that tell us? That tells us that none of these vertices can be in the independent set either. right? Because um, if, I, if we did include one of these, they're connected to the, the vertex we are including, but um, but yeah, yeah, but then that would have an edge between them and then so it's not an independent set. But now let's consider the, so that's situation one. So I'm going to move that over here. And let's say that we have a different situation where we are saying we're definitely not going to put this, oops, we're not going to put this vertex in. Then the question is, are we going to include any of the other vertices? And that's actually a good question because I don't know the answer to that. Um, we may or may not include them. Um, if we don't include any of them, then that, that's kind of troubling. But it, we, don't, we may include all of them or we may not include any of them. But here's the reason why we're talking about trees here instead of general graphs. If we look at what happens at each of these, vert at, at each of these vertices, so this vertex over here is going to reach some set of vertices over here. 
I don't know what the rest of the graph looks like, the rest of the tree looks like. Um, but this one reaches some vertices, this one reaches some, and this one over here reaches some also. But the key here to understand is that none of these sets of vertices over here um, are, are, have anything in common. These are disjoint sets of vertices. And the reason is, suppose that we have a vertex that's in two of these clusters right here. Uh, what could we actually do? What could we say about this? If a vertex is in two clusters, then that means that I can go from this vert, the top guy, down to that vertex over here, which is also over here, but then I can come back to the top vertex, which will create a cycle. But trees don't have cycles. Okay, so each one of these is disjoint. Why is that important? Well, it's important because if we can solve the same problem on all of these four vertices simultaneously, then whatever the number of vertices I can include in each of the clusters right here, the, the maximum independent set in this case will be, um, will be the sum of the numbers in each of the clusters. So for example, if I had two in this one, three in this one, five here, and two again in this one, then the total number of vertices in the independent set is uh, 12 because that's the sum of these and there aren't any vertices in any of the, any two clusters at the same time. Um, yeah, and then for this, this one over here, we can actually look at it in a very similar way. If we have it like this, so here are the clusters again. Well, here, what we need to do, again, is to figure out um, uh, each one of these over here, because we're not including these vertices, that's essentially this situation over here. Because we're including, not including the top guy right here, which is corresponding to this one. And so because we can solve this one, we can solve this one over here. And that's the whole idea. And the great thing is that because there are no cycles, then we only need to explore each of the vertices a constant number of times. Because once I come down over to here, I'm never going to hit any of these vertices over here, or over here, or over here. So then the question is, well, if I include this vertex, then I'm going to have to search through these a constant number of times. Then I look at the case over here, where I don't include this one vertex, and then I search through all of these, again, a constant number of times which actually gives a linear time algorithm, which is pretty cool. So how would you actually implement this? How would you actually uh, write an algorithm to do this? So I'm going to have um, a function called maximum independent set for trees, or mist. <laughs> I, I, I swear I did not come up with that. Um, uh, and what we're going to do right here is we're going to have, uh, let me do it this way. So we're going to have some a vertex v, which is go actually I'll make this uh, symmetric. So this v is going to be the yellow vertex upstairs at the top right here. So um, I didn't actually mention this when we when I did the definitions video, but sometimes we uh, we will assign a vertex to be something called the root of the tree. So the root is just a special name for I picked a vertex and that's it. So in here, the root can be any vertex whatsoever because, because we have a tree, um, this argument will still hold regardless of which vertex I start with. So I'm going to assume here that V is the root of the tree. But Remember that root just is a special name of a I've picked a vertex and and that's it. All right. So what do we actually do here? So there are two options for this vertex v. We either will include it in the maximum independent set or we won't. So let's look at those two cases. And in whatever the two numbers end up being, we just pick the maximum of the two because we want to find the maximum and in the case that it's either going to be we include it or we don't. There's no third possibility. It's not Schrodinger's graph or tree or something. All right, so what are we going to do here? So 
Uh, I'm going to have a variable called skip, which is going to keep track of the, the maximum independent set if we don't include this vertex fee. Okay, so this is going to be uh, initially zero. And actually what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, have this be the sum of calling M-I-S-T of uh, U, where U is a neighbor, the greatest sentence of all time. U is a neighbor of V. Okay, so that's just this situation over here. Uh, we didn't include this guy, so we just figure out what is what's the answer for each of these um, these four part these parts over here for each neighbor of v. I solve the same question for each one of them. Okay, and I just add them up because there's no vertex in multiple uh, clusters. All right, so then what do we do in the case of where we do include v? So uh, what we're going to do is the following. So I'm going to have a, vari a variable called keep, and I'm going to initially set it to be 1, because in, the, in this case, we are including v. And for that reason, we're going to skip every neighbor of v. So what I'm going to do is, instead of looking at the neighbors of v, I'm going to look at the second neighbors of v. So for all second, neighbors of V. Another term for this, by the way, is a grandchild or grand neighbor or something. So it's not the vertices that are a distance one from the from V, it's the ones that are a distance two. Because the question of is where, whether we're going to include those. We can't include any of the ones of distance one because we included the V. So we got to look at we got to try to answer the question of the ones at distance two. And all of those are basically the same idea as what we had here. But the issue is that we, if we just impl implemented this naively and we didn't store any of the past calculations, we could have an exponential time ru uh, running algorithm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some uh, property or, or some a variable attached to each of the vertices. So I'm going to have uh, right here something called v dot um, m size. And what is that going to be? It's going to be the, the max independent uh, size rooted at v. Okay, so it's just a variable that I'm attaching to the to the of, of uh, vertex v. Okay, so then what I'm going to do here in this little loop right here is I'm going to say I'm going to um, sorry I'm trying to write it in, in English. So we're going to add the the, the so-called um, the m size variable for each of these uh, second neighbors. So I'm actually going to give a name to these second neighbors. I'm going to call them S for second neighbor, so of V. We're going to add uh, S dot M size uh, to uh, keep. Okay, And we can guarantee that we are going to eventually uh, have this uh, because the, the recursive call is near the top. So we're going to be doing these recursive calls going further and further out in the tree. And at some point, we're not going to have any, um, we're not going to have any neighbors because we have only a, a finite number of vertices. So once we get down to those vertices at the end, we're going to hit this part right here. And of course, there are no second neighbors uh, here. So then what we're going to do is at the bottom, we're going to assign this M size variable to those very far away vertices and then backtrack. So then when we're going to start backtracking, uh, these recursive calls are going to eventually stop. And then we're going to look at the M size variable because they're, those correspond to further vertices away from V. 
Remember, these are second neighbors instead of uh, first neighbors. So they're going to have their M size um, calculation already done and uh, when these recursive calls are finished. And so by the time we get down here, these will be defined and they will be correct. It's just now we got to answer the question for ourselves at vertex V. So here we're going to add M size to that uh, variable keep. So now, very crucially, we're going to assign the M size of value to V because maybe some V happens to be some middle vertex. It's not the root necessarily. It's the root of where we are, but it might not be the root of the whole uh, tree. So here we're going to assign M size in the case that some vertices of my parents, probably, or grandparents, uh, or the root even, will need to know these M size values anyway. And it, it's just one number we're storing. It's not a big calculation. So we're going to have M size to be the maximum of whether we're going to keep V or skip it. So it's going to be the maximum of skip or keep. And we're going to return this value. And that's it. So we can be sure that this is a linear time algorithm because when we do these recursive calls right here, they're going to come down here where these numbers are already defined. And there's no overlap between them. And so therefore, we only will examine each of the vertices a constant number of times. And so the whole running time is in fact linear. So that's a really nice uh, dynamic programming behind the scenes in some sense uh, algorithm for finding the maximum independent set in trees. It, the maximum independent set problem, by the way, is actually really, really difficult for general graphs, but for trees it turns out to be really easy. So a question you may want to think about is, uh, is it still a linear time algorithm for other types of graphs? So maybe we have some cycles in the graph, or maybe a lot of cycles. Could we actually find the uh, maximum independent set for those types of graphs? For complete graphs or in things like that, that's really easy. But for other graphs, it actually might be really difficult. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave your thoughts about dynamic programming or the max independent set problem down into the comments. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, I'll see you next time.